Hi everyone, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is June 27th and our devotion is Life of Laughter from Job 8.21. He will once again fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. When was the last time you shouted with joy? It seems as the years go by, we find ourselves with more responsibility, more tasks, more heartache, and often more conflict. Our body gets tired, our minds grow weary, and our emotions are spent. It is important in times of heaviness that we find reasons to smile and laugh. God created laughter, and He is the source of true joy. If you are feeling like there's not enough joy in your life, take time to reflect on God's love for you. Understand that He is a merciful God. Know that He delights in you. Dwell on the beauty of His creation. Thank Him for the good relationships that He has brought into your life. Find Him in a song or a dance or the smile of a child. When you seek God, you will find what you need. Let Him once again fill your mouth with laughter. You know, as I was reading this earlier before I came on, I, I was thinking about the scriptures that there's so many in the Word of God that talk about the joy of the Lord. There's so many that talk about um, cheerfulness and laughter. Of course, I think the most known passage that we as Christians read is in Nehemiah 8, chapter 8, verse 10. And it tells us to, I'm finding it here. Let's see. He was talking to them at the time and he was telling them, I always like to read things in context, but we really only focus on the end of this. But he was talking to them about rejoicing and he said, and about not grieving. And he said, then he said to them, go and eat what is rich, drink what is sweet and send portions to those who have nothing prepared since today is holy to our Lord. And he said, do not grieve because the joy of the Lord is your strength, okay? He was telling them to rejoice, to be happy, to find their joy in the Lord because that's where they would find their strength, okay? And over in Psalms, we have in, a, let's see, I've got a couple of them here, but in Psalm, I'm going to do one in Psalms for this, or no, two. So let's go to Psalm 42 first. Okay. And I probably should have marked these before I got on, but that's okay. <laughs> I wanted to focus in on the word today and really pull from the word of God about what we're talking about. So in this, in this particular Psalm, David, of course, is feeling sad. He is grieved. He, he is very sad very very sad in this particular psalm okay this is um this psalm is a longing for god and it's actually this one is actually maskil of the son sons of korah okay this particular psalm but he says why my soul are you dejected why are you in such turmoil put your hope in god for i will still praise him my Savior and my God. Here we're talking about we're we're talking about telling ourselves when we're in that place of sadness and grief, or when we're in that place where we're downcast or dejected, whatever has caused it. This psalmist was asking, Why are you so downcast? He was asking himself, it's like Tara, why are you so downcast? Why are you in turmoil? Put your hope in God. For you will yet praise him. You know, I find for myself, when I wake up and I'm having a day where I literally just feel broken or sad or for whatever reason, and sometimes, I'll be honest, you guys, sometimes I don't even know why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. It's kind of like this psalmist, he's saying, why are you so sad? Why are you so dejected, soul? And, you know, our mind, will, and emotions, why are you so heavy and downcast? Put your hope in God and praise Him. That's what I do. I, I stop and I have this happen to me 
often enough that it has stood out to me to know what to do. When I'm in that place of, of bitterness, grief, resentment, pain, anger, fear, whatever, dejection, you know, whatever I'm feeling, I've learned to stop and say, okay, wait a minute praise the Lord. And I will literally turn on music or I will sing songs to him. I will read the scripture to him. I will talk to him of his wonders and his love and the works that he has done. And I will write in my prayer journal, worship prayers, not even prayers to ask him for anything, just writing out prayers of worship to him. And you know what? He always meets me there. I always feel that heaviness and that burden lift off of my heart, off of my mind and my emotions. Let's read from Psalm 100, verse 1 and 2. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Sing to Jesus. Sing to him. He loves to hear your songs. He loves it when we worship him, when we praise him, when we magnify him. And even if it's just you and him, that's even better when it's just you and him alone worshiping God. And then over in Proverbs chapter 15, okay, verse 11, or no, 13, I'm sorry. Verse 13, it says, a joyful heart makes a face cheerful. But a sad heart produces a broken spirit. Joy. Joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart. We know that song. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Are we seeing a theme here? <laughs> he is our strength. He is our joy. He is our happiness, our cheerfulness. He should be the main focus of every single day. And when we make him our main focus, our heart is lifted. Our joy comes to fruition in our life, in our mind, in our emotions, as we draw it out of our heart. In Proverbs 15, 15, it says, All the days of the oppressed are miserable, but a cheerful heart has a continual feast. You know, we are not oppressed. We are free because we have Jesus as our Savior. We were set free by the blood of the Lamb, and we are free by the word of our testimony. Speak out your testimony. Let yourself hear your testimony. And when I say that, I'm saying, remember the things that God has done. Remember the times when He has met you right where you needed him to meet you and he has lifted you up out of a situation make an go back and revisit those altars that you made at the time when you were giving him thanks for bringing you through something revisit your testimony because you will find that you are not oppressed and you don't have to walk in misery that you have a cheerful heart because you have the joy of the lord and his joy is your strength. And that you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And that gives you something to feast on continually. Let's go over to Proverbs 17. Just a couple pages to the right. And I want you to see in chapter 17 verse 22. I love this passage. A joyful heart is good medicine. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. No, there's another version there are other versions that say bitterness dries up the bones are you allowing yourself to feel bitterness today or resentment or anger and unforgiveness towards someone even if it's towards yourself toward the past something that happened surrender that to Jesus Surrender brokenness and bitterness and anger and resentment and all those things that are not bringing you life. Surrender those things to Jesus today and allow the joy in your heart to come forth and begin to work as a medicine, as a, as a medicine to your whole body, to your mind, to your heart. Let's go over to Romans. Okay, no, let's do John first. Sorry. I'm going to do John. 
chapter 15, verse 11. As you can see, I love the, the chapter of 15 in John. <laughs> I have told you these things. Now, Jesus was talking to them about having love, a Christ-like love. As the Father has loved me, I'm going to read it in context because I, I don't want to just jump into a scripture. I want it to actually be correct. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. And if you read the rest of that, He tells us what that means, this command of love, loving one another as He has loved us. Are you walking in love today? Are you walking in obedience to what the Lord has commanded? Are you walking close to Him and remaining in His Word and remaining in His love? Because if we read this whole chapter, here we're talking about remaining in the love of Christ. We're talking about remaining in His Word. We're talking about here staying close to the Lord through His, through, through His Word and being that vine he is the vine, we are the branch. God is the one who prunes. He's the vine dresser, our Father. You know, it's it all comes together. As we have been talking about a lot lately, coming to His Word and allowing the fruit of the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts and to ex just for us to just reflect that in our lives. If you're feeling downcast today, go to God's Word. Worship Him. Praise Him. Pray. Spend time with Him. Abide in His Word. And His joy is going to make you complete. Let's go over to one last one. We're going to go to Romans. I think I missed one. We're going to go to Romans chapter 15. Verse 13. Okay. Now, may the God of hope fill you. I'm sorry, my, I'm not focusing on my words. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what I was just talking about. Overflowing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Just allowing the Holy Spirit to wash away and cleanse all the negativity that you're feeling, all the things that don't belong, because God wants us to have his joy. He wants us to have his peace. He wants us to walk in light, even in the midst of shadow. I always tell you guys this, and I want you to remember that the Lord wants us to be Resting in Him, even in the midst of struggle, even when we're in a storm. He may not bring the storm to, to, to make it subside completely. But when you are with Him, entering into His rest in the midst of it, and walking in joy, and allowing His joy to come forth in your heart, that storm is going to subside and it's going to lose its ability to control your response to it. As you spend time in God's Word and you spend time with Him in prayer and praise and worship, that storm's power over you subsides and no longer controls how you're feeling. You do not have to be controlled by the happenings around you, the happenstance. You don't have to have your joy and your peace and your happiness stolen by the situation. You know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord came, came to give us life and life more abundant. And that, that does not mean our lives 
are going to look perfect all the time. Everything is laid out. Every little situation is ironed out. There's no problems. There's no struggle. That is not what the Word of God teaches us. The Word of God teaches us that we will go through struggles. We live in a real world. But He tells us, come to me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will bring you rest. So let's enter into his peace today. Let's walk in his joy and let's find our laughter again. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we want to feel joy again in our lives. We want to be people that reflect the deep joy that's experienced by knowing you. Father, remind us of things today that are good, that are good reasons to smile. Remind us of all the things you've done and all the things that you've promised you will do. Fill our mouths with laughter and our lips with shouts of joy into your holy name because you are worthy. You are worthy. There is no one else in this life. There is nothing else in this life that is worthy of praise. Only you. And we surrender all of our desires to you today, Father. We desire to feel your joy bubbling up out of us like a river flowing and overflowing onto others around us. We desire, Father God, to reflect your precious Son, Jesus. We love you and we thank you for this gift. In thy name we pray, Lord. Amen. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.